Hey friends, it's Jeannie. Thanks for joining me here today. I'll be sharing this fun and easy card using the Not Too Shabby Drink the Coffee stamp set. It was a part of the May subscription box, but it has sold out. There are standalone stamps that were in the box still available as a standalone item in the shop, so I'll link this stamp set below. As you can see, I already stamped out my first sentiment using Ink on 3's Blackout Ink. And I took a tea ruler and a pencil to draw a rectangle around the sentiment. And this is basically the process for my card. I had the idea of using all the sentiments in this set. As you can tell from the stamp set, they're all super bold sentiments and they're fun ones. I usually use a bold sentiment as a main focal point for a card, but I do also tend to want to use them all in one. I just can't help it. I really like stamp sets where you can use all the sentiments or all the images in a particular stamp set to make it worth your while. For the first one, I went ahead and masked off the first sentiment because I don't want to stamp over it or in that space of the rectangle. Luckily, since these are rectangles, it is really easy to do. I am just using post-it masking tape. You can use whatever you have in your stash. For some of the sentiments, I do have to stamp it twice because they do have solid areas in this stamp set and I really wanted the boldness of the stamp to show. So again, after each sentiment is stamped, I will draw a rectangle around it and it is a bit hard to see in the video, but later I'll go over the lines with a Copic Black friendly marker. You just want to make sure that you remember to mask off all the rectangles. The idea behind it is that the sentiments are on little cards and they are scattered about on I guess a tabletop or something like that and you have to remember that there are cards that will be laying on top of each other. I will be going in with my Copic friendly marker because I will be doing some coloring. This card definitely does not need a lot of coloring. I did a very simple, quick, sped up coloring for it. I only used six Copic markers, which is pretty small for me. Usually I end up with a whole pile of Copics on my desk, but I only use six for this particular card. You just want to be careful that you don't overlap the lines where they shouldn't be, so it stays consistent with the business card kind of look but these are sentiment cards. And I know that a lot of people do ATC cards, artist trading cards. So I think that it's a similar idea. I'm going in with my lightest pink marker, which is R81 and coloring all the extra space that isn't one of the sentiment cards. Then I'm taking the next two colors, R83 and R85, just to add shadows underneath the little cards. And this will just make it look like it's popped up and it adds a bit of dimension. So I thought that it was fun to do so it doesn't look super flat. And for the cards themselves, I will be going in with my grays. So when I want something to look white, I usually use C00, C1, and C3. I'm just going to go in just to add a bit of shadow just to give it a little bit more dimension uh, anywhere the cards overlap, that's where I'm adding shadows and I will color up that area around it. You definitely don't want to color the whole thing unless you want the sentiment cards to look gray. If you leave a lot of white space, the cards will just look white uh, eventually. So the gray is really light here, but it does dry down even more. Because these are alcohol markers, the ink will dry and then it will seep into the paper and it will be a little bit lighter than what it looks like. The coloring is very quick and simple and I will be going ahead and taking this card panel and actually trimming it down because I thought it would be fun to mat it on black cardstock just for an extra look to the card. So for my card panel. I added double-sided adhesive and I have a trick for lining it up so you don't put it down unevenly. I'll have the double-sided adhesive and fold back some of the release paper in the corners. I'll lay it on top of my black cardstock and once I'm happy with the placement, I'll push down on the corners. Since the double-sided adhesive is exposed, it'll stick and you can just remove the release paper from underneath and your card panel will be lined up perfectly. 
But that's it. Today's card was super simple and a really fun way to use these bold sentiments in the stamp set. So I hope you enjoyed it. This was a really fun one for me and I just love how it looked. You can add embellishments and add images if you wanted it, but I just wanted to leave it alone and I thought it was perfect. I'll see you guys next time with another video. Bye!